We are going to paint a peony together, leaving no stone unturned. And we're going to use the value finder to do it, so let's get started. All right, we have a long way to go. Now we're only going to do part of the peony because I'm going to do the background a different day. But here's the screen capture if you decide you want to paint the peony too. And here are the color dabs up close. So you can look at them with a value finder or a value scale if you have them. So now we're going to start the process. So starting the process, we have, ah, there we go. We have a peony and the photograph. Now I never match color to the photograph because the photograph and color are very misleading. But what I do do is I match the value. So that's what I'm going to figure out first. I'm going into my paints and making some value dabs. These are going to be medium value dabs. There's alizarin crimson, which is a dark red. There's a rose, which is a lighter red. That's Naples yellow, which is going to be in the light column. And, ah, and a rose with ultramarine blue, and that's going to be a dark. So if I look at them through the value finder, there you go. You can see lights, mediums, and darks. Now, as you can see, one of them was a little too light in that medium column. That uh, permanent rose was too light. So I added a little bit of blue to tip it. Do you see how it matches now? So I've got two matching values in my mediums, one dark and one light. It's really important throughout the strategy, using the value finder as a tool, instead of looking petal by petal, to make sure that in each column, the values are the same. So my light values always have to be light, my medium values have to be mediums, and my darks have to be darks. Other than that, the color doesn't matter. Only the value, meaning how light or dark something is, matters. Now the next thing I do is I figure out my triad for the whites. My triad almost always is um, Naples yellow, a little bit of cerulean blue, and a uh, rose. And so those I put in my light column. So I have my lights, my mediums, and my darks. I am ready to go. <laughs> With my heart in my throat. My heart is always in my throat. I know it's just a painting, but I want them all to work, and they don't always all work. Now this one is, like I said, it's not going to have a background in it. We'll do the background probably tomorrow or a different day. And we're going to use the same strategy to do it. But I didn't want to overwhelm either me or you. So I'm glad if you stayed this long. That's terrific. All right, so first I put in my darks. Now you're going to say to me, but Joe, that's not the dark that you have in the dark column. And you are right. I made a little decision in between uh, when I started the painting and when I mixed up the color that I decided that my darkest dark for right now was actually going to be that medium dark red, the, um, what do you call it, alizarin crimson. So that's what's going in right now. I'm putting in only the very darkest darks that I can see. Now on the photograph, they almost look like blacks. And I think that one that's one of the issues that people get into is when they match the photograph to the uh, painting that they're doing, you can start off um, and get off, off on um, something being too dark. And uh, I can always go darker, which I will later, but I can't go lighter. So I wanna make sure that I put in all my darks, but, um, but making sure that, uh, that they're not too dark to begin with, because I'm gonna need to make some adjustments later. So those are my darks, even though I borrowed them from my medium column. Now, the reason that they can be called darks is because uh, all I'm reacting to now is, is comparing them to the white of the paper. And compared to the white of the paper, they're dark. All right, now we're gonna put in the lights. Now, the only rule here is anything that I put in has to be lighter in value than anything that I put in before. So everything has to be lighter than th those uh, marks that I made in that first step. And in order to do that, I use a watered down triad. I use those three colors of um, rose, cerulean blue, and, Nap and Naples yellow. Those are gonna be my whites. I almost never use white out. Now they don't look white, and I know they don't look white, but the truth is uh, white is seldom completely white on its own. It tends to be made up of the spectrum, a red, a yellow, and blue. So that's what I'm putting in here. I'm being very careful not to rub because I want those individual colors to look individual. But if I was to look at them through the value finder, they would read as lighter than the dark that I put in so far. That's the only rule in my strategy is nothing can be darker right now than what I already put in. And I'm leaving the absolute whites. Um, anything that I see that is just completely white, I'm leaving um, blank. But there aren't very many of them. And so um, you'll see that most of the time I attend to them with this 
light triad. So this is kind of careful work, I have to say, but worth it in the end. I do tend to look at the petals. I'll tend to look at where the petal joins. Uh, so I might put the cerulean blue in where the petal joins and, um, and then the um, rose next to it and then the Naples yellow next to that. But you see, I don't rub. I let the paint kind of combine by itself. So you end up with those three colors almost looking like they're separate, but they're not. And if you step back from the painting, they're definitely not. So that's what I talk about when I'm talking about um, mix for color, mass for value. I found my masses, where, which are those lights. Then I mix these three colors, and I'm making them go into those masses that I already um, identified. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. There's a strategy behind this. <laughs> there's, a, there's a method behind this madness. There's always a method. And the reason that I like to use cerulean blue is uh, sometimes there's a tendency for people to paint a painting you know, a painting like this, especially of a pink peony, and have it be completely using the pink or the red spectrum. And the result is that it will match the photograph really well, but it ends up looking almost one value when you um, walk away from it. I want to really fool the eye. I want the eye to be fooled into thinking this is a three-dimensional object and that it has volume. All right, time to dry things. This is also the end of what I would call step two. So step one was putting in those darks, even though, as I said, I made the executive decision at the last minute to make them my darks mediums, and I put in my lights. There we go. You can see through the value finder, only darks and lights. All right. Now what I did there was I think I decided that my that my that I needed to go a little bit darker, even though my, my medium is adequate for right now. Let me see what I do. I think that's what I do because um, the reason that I decided, yeah, there we go. I mixed up a little bit of a warmer dark to put in. Now, the reason that I did this was um, once I established my lights and my darks, all I have left is midtones. And I was afraid that if I didn't establish some darker darks than I already had in that first step, that uh, I was going to end up losing everything in midtones and it was going to read as flat. The only way to get volume is to get a dark, a medium, and a light thing happening. And then you will be able to um, pretend to the eye, or the eye will receive it as being a value shape. And in this case, the value shape is, well, arguably kind of a ball. <laughs> Peonies tend to be a ball almost, almost all the time, whereas roses tend to be cones. Um, so that was just a, a last minute decision based on a lot of experience. Now, as I'm crossing out the darks and the lights, I'm not going to get involved in them anymore. I'm done with them. Done. So now I sort of clean my palette off a little bit, and I need to concentrate on mediums. But I don't want to use the mediums that I've already used, so I mix up a little bit more of a rose with some Naples yellow in it. There's a few of them coming now. There's going to be quite a few mediums, because remember I said most of this rose is uh, medium toned. So there we go mediums. They can't be as light as the lightest lights, and they can't be as dark as the darkest darks. That's the only rule here. I'll say it again. Nothing in the mid-range that I do now can be as light as the lightest lights, and nothing can be as dark as the darkest darks. That is the only rule here. The other thing that I have to be conscious of is anything that is in shadow, and there's not much shadow in this painting, but I can't leave anything completely white unless it's in the direct sunlight, and I don't think there's anything in the direct sunlight in this painting. It, uh, this rose is uh, I mean, peony is mostly in shade. So here we go. Once again, I'm massing for value, mixing for color. I mix those colors. You can see them, those three colors that are left in the medium column. I'm using those three to fill in the masses. And occasionally, I'm mixing some other color as well. I want to use as many colors as I can to fill in the medium. But again, the rule is it can't be as light as my lights, and it can't be as dark as my darks. Other than that, it can be anything I want it to be. So that's what's happening here. Now, what I'm also doing is I'm making sure that my paint is thick. It's as thick as gravy, if possible. I don't want things to become washed out or look like, um, like I used water in order to get the light colors that I want to get. Sometimes painters, um, watercolor painters will use water to get lighter colors, but the result of that is that your painting ends up looking quite washed out when you're done. I always say, kind of like a pair of jeans that you wash in the washer a hundred times. They just look faded, and I don't want to do that. I want to be definitive about my choices here. So it's going to be important later, because remember, the background isn't in yet. That background is going to be a dark green, greenish background with some dark greenish shapes. So this form has to hold up against that. And again, we're not going to paint that today. That's probably going to happen tomorrow. So we'll continue this. So all I'm doing now is putting in my medium shapes, as many as I can. 
And now I'm really glad that I use that cerulean blue. Otherwise, everything would just be in the pinky kind of range. Now, I think what's happening now is I realize that as much as I feel pretty confident about what I've done so far, what I don't have is I don't have any neutral. And so I'm going to mix up a neutral now. To mix up a neutral, I'm going to use a, a, a light, a, a medium, and a dark. In other words, I'm using that triad that I used at first, the cerulean blue, the alizarin crimson, and um, some Naples yellow, to mix up kind of a arguably grayish pink. That is a neutral color. And I need that right now because I always think of neutrals as being the glue that holds things together. I'm still doing the same thing I did before. It's still a medium, but it's going to blend and make those forms combine in ways that uh, that the eye really um, just really likes. It's a way of allowing the the um, peony in the end. I mean, when we finish it, we put it in the dark background. You'll see those neutrals sort of work like um, glue. <laughs> I can't can't explain it exactly, but my point just is when I get to when I have a painting and I know I haven't used a neutral yet, I want to make sure to get a neutral into my form if I can, because I know in the end the painting will hang together better if I do. So that's where we are so far. Remember there was a screen capture. Oh, and this is walking away from the painting, so you can look back and you can see that it has some mass, but we haven't done the background yet. That's going to be really important. And like I said, I think we'll do that tomorrow. So remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paint wet, mass for value, mix for color. You can go back and screen capture the peony if you want to paint it with me, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, remember to keep the whites your paper white and your paint wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.